Do you sometimes think about your mortality? Think about dying? Does it scare you? Does Are you scared? Do you not want it to happen? Do you not look forward to it? Do you want to know what happens after death? Like, have you been saving up enough merit points to where you're going to get to the happily ever after instead of burning down in the pits of hell? Well, you're in luck because today we're going to talk about death. This is the Existential Stoic Podcast. I'm Randy. That's Danny. What's going on, Danny? What's up, Randy? Yeah, so uh, we were just talking a little bit before this episode. We had some salient points about death. I wish we were recording it, but can't. It's a shame. Yeah. (laughs) So do you remember the first time when you uh, kind of experienced death in, in and around your life? Oh, experienced death? I mean, not you personally. Obviously, <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, I thought you were going to say the first time. I, I do remember really the weirdest thing. The first time I thought about it clearly was when I was in kindergarten, actually. Because mm. I didn't go to church on a, just a side note. Like, family didn't go by the time I was born. So, like, that was never, like, the God thing and stuff wasn't really a thing until late. Like, I learned about that stuff later. But anyway, I remember uh, I was laying, I was waiting for the bus. It was early. I was laying on the couch and I was imagining i don't know like just nothing like closing my eyes and just the darkness and i had a thought that i thought that's what death would be like be just like that nothing it was weird and i still remember it to this day yeah very weird a philosopher Um, from the very early time maybe right who knows (laughs) (laughs) and then uh but i did i had a lot i mean i had i had you know four siblings so there was enough like we had pets we had rabbits we had fish we had you know uh dogs and stuff so there was plenty of time to experience that 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 was my most encounters with when i was younger was with our animals you know Mm, yeah yeah there were a whole bunch of like small animals that died when i was young but i remember the first dog that i ever got wanted a dog so bad and then when it was a year old apparently it had some brain disease and you'd it was the crazy it was like the worst traumatic thing for a kid because like i wanted a dog forever we got a dog it was its first birthday going to the vet for one year vet visit and then for some reason i don't know what i i don't I was thinking about this the other day. I don't know what was going on. I think the dog tried to bite, bite the vet, and the vet was just like, "Let's put it down." And I'm, but I looked back, <laughs> and I looked back, and I was like, "That doesn't really make sense." But yeah, it was the weirdest thing. Put the dog down, and I was just like mortified. That's hard. Yeah, that's. I don't know. I always found like that. I've had animals die, like naturally, like where they just die, you know, whatever. But like when you have to put them down, that is hard, especially when you're young. Because, like, you want to be there for it, but you also are, like, seeing the light go out, you know? Like, and it's, like, because I, I remember my sheepdog we had. He died when I was, like, I think eight. But he went out in the backyard, laid under a tree. Mm-hmm. And that was it. He just yeah. didn't wake up. You know, very peaceful. That's the best way for them to go. Yeah. And, like, yeah, it's sad when you find them. But, like, he he was doing what he wanted. You know, he did it exactly as he wanted. Like, there's nothing, no pain, nothing. Like, he was, you know no real issues like i mean like you know he's older but i kind of you know yeah. okay so talking about that i used to be a veterinarian i've killed hundreds if not thousands of animals mercy humanely God. yeah right but uh you know they, i never liked doing it i absolutely hated it and it was something where like i was forced to do i had no choice in the job because it was either it was like that's what a veterinarian does you either do that or you don't work here so uh i didn't enjoy that but it made me think that, like, when animals die naturally, that's great. They may be suffering before they die naturally. When you have to kill your own animal, it's like, okay, you know that they're suffering enough that it's worth killing. But there's a lot of uncertainty when you have to bring your animal to a veterinarian, schedule a visit, get them to do all that stuff. I think it would be better off if they just got rid of veterinarians euthanizing animals and just said, hey, if your animal's suffering, put a bullet in its head. Like... Because that's how you had to do it, old yeller style. Yeah. I mean, you could also, I mean, theoretically, well, I guess it could be, I was going to say, it could just, like, give you the thing, you know, the uh, euthanasia medication, too. You could inject it in them. Mm. I mean, it's not yeah. complicated. You know, it is what it is. I guess it's hard. I guess. Well, you'd have, you'd have, to, get it, you'd have to get it in some type of vasculature. Some vasculature. Oh, yeah, that would be hard. But you yeah, can, nowadays, in cats, you can find the kidney and just go right in there. Oh really? Highly oh, there you go. And skinny dogs, you can find it too, but mostly yeah. Cats. 
Well, anyways, this isn't the t this isn't at all what I was <laughs> I what talking, talking about with. <laughs> no, nope. we got tight. So, like, yeah. So, I was thinking about it. Like, oftentimes, because you know, every morning I'm reading Marcus Aurelius. He's always talking about death, and it's Gosh, just man. it's this crazy <laughs> thing where, like, most of the time, I distract myself from the reality that I'm going to die, and then yeah, I think most of us do. Yeah, yeah, and then I think about it that I'm going to die, and I'm like okay cool like that's fine but then i think about the people that it'll impact like me dying i'm cool with that because i've done the stuff that i want to do and whatever like i understand it's a part of life but like you know people might be sad might be inconvenient whatever. well that's always you know they and philosophers have talked about that a lot too especially you see that a lot in biomedical ethics you know this that like when we talk about death and especially when you're talking about like euthanasia right so like you know if somebody's sick and, you know, they want to be they want to be mercy killed. One of the issues that a lot of people come up with is that we focus more on like the consequences of other people when we think about it often from a moral perspective or from like a right wrong perspective than we do about the individual who's actually suffering, which is funny. And even they do. Right. Like where we, we tend to more worry about what other people who are still left alive are going to feel rather than, you know, our own situation, which is yeah. funny because. At the same time, like, wouldn't it be better off anyway? Like, if you're really suffering, wouldn't it be better for everybody? If, if you know, so, you had an end to it. So here's another interesting thing. is like, everybody is gung-ho about science nowadays. And it's like a foundational theory of science, the conservation of energy. So, like, if you die, you're not going anywhere. It's not like, you know, you're mm. just going to be changing Recycle. to something different. And, yeah. and and like your whole body changes every seven years or whatever anyways so it's like anything that you were uh, other than what you think you are completely different dude the more you think about our lives anyway it's insane first of all i mean yeah the fact that we die is crazy because all we know is experiencing life so all we know is not death and then at some point that we know that's going to happen i mean we do know it i guess like from an outside perspective but not literally ourselves right and then we're made up of what, how many trillions of cells and other organisms and foreign bodies that all collectively work together to somehow make this thing work. <laughs> like, and then when it dies, that all breaks down and that gets recycled and becomes all kinds of other different things. I mean, it's insane when you think about it. Like, yes. Yeah. How can you wrap your head? Because, you know, we think of ourselves as a, we think of ourselves as one, an individual because of our consciousness. But the reality is, is that's not true. We are many things, right? I mean, we're atoms, we're cells, we're organisms, we're all kinds of stuff. And, like, it's just really weird when you think about it. And the fact that, like, you know, we don't know what happens after we die either, if anything. Yeah, it's quite curious. But the, the other crazy thing is, like, I don't know. How do, how, do you, how do you live a good life so that you can live, have a good death? I don't, I don't know. I think whatever you I do, have you a good do. death is hard. I don't, yeah, that's a hard one. It's like, good death is, like, I don't know that we always have a choice over that. Like we can do our best, right? Take care of ourselves. Try to like, because that that's the other thing we were talking about this before, and that's the other thing that's I mean that terrifies me too is like, you can in in a sense die even before you die, right? Like you can you know get this is that impair you know like dementia that's really bad or like I remember I had a friend who's um one of their parents got early onset dementia that was really rapid. I mean she was forty five and like within a year couldn't remember like her family's names like that's scary mm -hmm. and like you know if you think about it our whole concept of the person's tied to their consciousness and their sense of self when that's gone i mean yeah their physical body's here but it's like they're not here anymore mm -hmm. and it's really weird right i mean so that always got me too with this like this problem that like death physical death doesn't even have to be the end because your consciousness seems to be more important than your actual physical body mm -hmm. you know yeah. And it's like, how do you yeah, think, how do you enjoy the pleasures of life, even the ones that are bad for you in correct proportion, but not too much? That's the that's the thing I'm really struggling with, like smoking yeah, cigarettes and eating junk food and pizza and all these things that, you know, are good for you and bad for you. How do you balance that? I I'm asking because I really need an answer. <laughs> I obviously didn't stop smoking, so I mean I don't know what to tell you. Uh I like it though, so but you know it is what it is. 
I mean, I think this is the other problem, though, right? Because I think this is well, this is one of the things I think we're thinking about our our mortality is really important, though, right? Because like Marcus Aurelius talks about this all the time. The existentials talk about it constantly, right? In some sense, the fact that life is short and that we only have one time, it also makes it more valuable, right? But if you don't think about it, we're so used to denying death. We don't even think about it. We think we have all the time in the world. But the reality is, it's like, this might only be, this might be it. And if death is going to happen and nothing means anything, we should make the most of it that we can, whatever that means for you, right? And I think that's the other hard part because, you know, yeah, some things might shorten your life. They might cause problems down the road. But like, what matters more to you? And what are, where do your values align? And how can you make that the best life? Because you only have one shot. It's, it's hard to know what you'll think in the future. No, it's, yeah, it's very difficult. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's a tough it one. Is. It is. That's hard. a tough one. Or what you'll regret, right? It's hard mm -hmm. to know what you'll regret in the future, too, like if you did something wrong. But I think this is the this is the thing, right, is that by thinking about our immortality, it puts pressure on us to choose in ways that are more correctly aligned with who we are, hopefully. Or to yeah. do those things that we're dragging our feet to do, right? Like, you know, to get out of that relationship or leave that shitty job or to you know do something like move because you wanted to move somewhere you know and just do it instead of waiting like i think you know that's so, where it can be very valuable so here's so here's like a thought experiment that i've had like if i knew that i had six months left to live or like three months left to live i would be like all right smoking cigarettes drinking <laughs> drinking myself retarded every day just eating pizza yeah. and, and cheese curls and goldfish nonstop, and but it's, but I, I never know. Well, maybe not never, but like, I mean, even, I don't think even when a doctor say you have three months, I mean, really they're just giving statistically whatever. So like, I'll, yeah, they don't know. Clearly I'll never mm -hmm. actually know that I'll have that period of time. And what happens if my whole life goes by and I miss that opportunity? Yeah, it's tough, right? I mean, well, you could just do it in moderation now and not worry about that. I mean, that's always yeah. an option if you're that worried about it, but like, you know, it is hard, though, because that's, I, you know, those thought experiments are good, I think, for, like, figuring out big decisions or, like, regrets. They're not great, I don't think, for, like, everyday things like that, because you don't know. Like, if you did know that was going to happen, you're also assuming you also feel fine. Mm. Like, and would enjoy those things, right? Because, like, the reality is, is normally when people have, like, six months left, they don't feel that good. Mm. You know, the, they're not eating and stuff and enjoying True. it and all. I mean, so I think that's also kind of a problem. Ah. That's the challenge. That you would know? suck. That would suck yeah. if I gave up pizza for like my whole life trying to stay healthy and oh, then I, I have pizza. three months it's left really to live, good. but I can't eat. That would be the worst torture ever. I eat pizza like once a week. I like oh it. Oh my gosh. It's it's the problem is I don't have moderation. I'm like, I I can go, I, mean, I, don't really I can, mean. I can abstain from stuff <laughs> or I just go way too far overboard. There's no middle yeah. ground for me. <laughs> It's very, it is hard. It's hard being a person. It is difficult. I find that out more and more all the time, you know, but it's so, it, it is, that's a weird, you know, it's, it's funny because I, I think thinking about that's interesting too, because it just shows us how little we know about the things we're most familiar with, right? <laughs> you know, it's mm -hmm. weird. And I think that's where science is interesting too. Like we know so little about, like the more we find out, the more we realize we don't know. The more questions, I mean, everything just opens up more questions, right? It doesn't answer. I mean, science only tells us how things work. It doesn't really tell us why. So that just leaves a ton of questions open. And the more we find out, the more questions you have. So I think it just, it does help put things in perspective that like no one knows. So plus, you have to kind of figure it out yourself. And plus, I heard it said recently, like science really only takes a look at things that happened and explains why they happened. It has very little predictive power. Yeah, I mean, well, because we don't know everything. You know, like if we, I guess eventually, like if we did come up with like a unified theory that actually did, you know, that would probably be good at predicting stuff, theoretically, I guess. But like, mm -hmm. you know, when that's going to happen, who the hell knows? And probably not for a long time. So mm -hmm. we have a lot of things to work out. Yeah. You know, they're still debating whether it's like we need 11 dimensions mm -hmm. or like multiple <laughs> worlds and stuff for the math to work. I know, right? <laughs> Dude, it is crazy reading science fiction because, like, sometimes I'm reading that stuff and I forget it's fiction. <laughs> I know. Dude, when you read a lot of it, it's bad. I I was on a kick for a while and, like, I realized, like, I was starting to confuse, like, fake science <laughs> with reality. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. I think it, I, is, yeah. it is good that that happens. Because it's, it's totally feasible. I mean, the, the expanse of the universe is huge. And we have no oh, idea. God, yeah. Dude, we have we have no clue. It's so big. It's like just the size of the Milky Way. But that's the other thing that's interesting. Here's the other thing. I think that's also interesting with death, right? Is like you look at the universe is so huge. There's so many unknowns and so many weird random things happen. Like it does make me wonder sometimes, like, you know, if death is really the end. Because if everything's recycled, right? If everything just is, I mean, we're like they, you know, that old saying, like your stardust or whatever, right? Because we're mm -hmm. all formed from stuff that existed before, just in new arrangements. Like I always wondered, like, if it if it is like a transitory thing, and like there is another stage, but it's like not what we think. Because it's like, you know what I mean? Does that make sense? Like. Well, dude, I mean, according to science again that everybody loves, the Big Bang Theory, which is like the strongest theory that they have right now for how yeah. things started, like literally all of matter of the entire <laughs> universe was shrunk down into the size of smaller than a pinpoint. Like everything was... With no laws of physics or anything, yeah. Yeah. You know what's funny? There's a, uh, a pre-Socratic philosopher... Um, I want to say it's Anaxagoras, but I might be wrong. It might be somebody else before him. But anyway, they had this theory that like everything comes from one thing. And they talk about the beginning of all things as he's, he says, like, in the beginning, like everything existed within this thing. And it was one. And it basically had all the potential for everything else. He basically explained something that's very similar sounding to like hmm. the big. Now, granted, you know, a little bit more like, I guess they didn't have all the science that we have. So it's a little different, but like it's very similar and interesting. That they had like similar ideas, like that it would make sense for everything to come from one point like that and then expand out almost. Similar Tao to Ching. The Tao gives rise yeah. to one, one gives rise to two, two gives rise to three, three gives rise to the many things. It's like, yeah. Uh, yeah, same type of thing. Well, that's the other interesting thing. It's like we also experience life as an individual. We feel like we're separate from everything else, but we're connected to everything. That's the other weird thing. Like, you know, like we are, we're not even like maintaining our bodies on Earth. You know, there's bacteria. There's all kinds of crap that's helping us out. And like, oh, plus there's all the people shit. farming the food and yeah, shipping the food that, right? and preparing there's the, the air. And... I mean, everything. Like, it's so interesting that, that we think we're like this individual entity. But in reality, like, we're not distinguishable from anything else. In some sense, you can look at the whole and say it's a one thing, like the Tao, right? You know, the one, it's one mm -hmm. and gives rise to many and many gives rise to one. Like, it's, it is mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So we haven't touched on death at all. A little bit, sort of. But it's more just big questions, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. Confusing thing. Big confusing questions about life. I guess this is why though, I think people should think about it more, though, because we do deny it. I think the more you think about these types of unknowns, it, the more it ex opens your mind to thinking about things differently, too. Mm. They're scary questions. They're hard questions, but like you know, at the same time, they're also important ones. You know how they say that, like sometimes at the moment of your death or whatever life slows down or you like go through your whole life over again in your mind something like that yeah that's gotta be yeah. crazy yeah i've heard well okay so i've heard that i know when um i remember reading when people die there's like a flood of a certain i think a certain hormone or something in your brain oh yeah it's like mdma or whatever that so yeah it's supposed yeah. to be like and like D think DHT, that might... dmt dmt that's yeah it. yeah that's it yeah and like they think that might be a cause of it, but they don't know. Like that could be a cause of it. That could also be like why it's, you know, it could be why it's happening. It could also be who knows, right? And what the hell's going on? See, so yeah, that's it. It is interesting. And like I always found that fascinating how time will like you ever get in an accident and like it's like right before it happens, like everything seems like it takes like 20 minutes, like a second takes 20 minutes. You see, and then all of a sudden time speeds up again. Mm -hmm. And it's really weird how like our perception of time is so relative that like we can like hyper focus and slow things down like that i always found that fascinating and mm -hmm. i think that's kind of probably what happens like with death like the end could seem pretty long if you think about it right because i think back like when i had an accident one time guy crossing me and hit me in a side it's crazy but like i remember like as soon as i saw his car it was like he was going like i don't know 60 miles an hour but for the timing for him to go like 10 feet seemed like it took like five minutes it was really bizarre and i was like oh this is coming uh, it's no. gonna suck you know <laughs> and like, like yeah, yeah i wonder if it's like that that'd be bizarre right mm -hmm. interesting well any uh, other thoughts on death 
I think we should think about it more probably. I think it would make yeah. us better people and I, you know, people happier because they would live better lives, I would hope, you know? <laughs> I mean, I, it, it is very, I found it very helpful for like helping to live my life because on a regular basis, I do remind myself that I'm going to die. And so like, yeah. I, it helps me not put off things. It helps me not put off things and not take things too seriously too. I still take stuff way too seriously. That doesn't help me. I try not to. I know. I still do a lot of things, but like some things it helps, right? It's like, oh, I'm going to die. It doesn't matter. Whatever. Yeah. Who cares? Yeah. yeah. It's a tough one. All right. Well, that's all for this episode. If you enjoyed this, uh, you can check out our other podcasts on any streaming service. You could watch us on YouTube. And if you really enjoyed this, you could write us a glowing review on Apple Podcasts because that helps out the podcast so much. Anyways, this is the Existential Stoic Podcast. I'm Randy. That's Danny. I'll see you later, Danny. Later, Randy.